Intel's Raptor Lake, looking super fast. Steam's not gonna give us the deck dock and uh, AMD's gonna be selling a new GPU that has a curious name. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going into the hot news deck. I've said it so many times that my mouth can't even get the words out. We're the hot tech news, Brett Fist, all that good stuff. Let's start off today by talking about new benchmarks, actually some of the first benchmarks that we're seeing coming out about Intel's upcoming i9-13900K chip. This is something that we're expecting to launch later this year in competition with AMD's Ryzen 7000 series chips. We kind of understand what the specs are gonna be like like. It's going to have 24 cores with 32 threads and be a pretty decent chip overall. But now there are user benchmark scores that are popping up. But before we go too deep into it, I do just want to say that this isn't a final estimation of how much better performance it's going to be overall. Take it with a heavy grain of salt, just like you should take AMD's presentation at Computex with a heavy grain of salt, just being like, what does 15% single threaded mean all around? Who knows what's going on? So let's go over this. This 13900K chip right up here looks to be running at only 4.6 gigahertz. So we'll chat about that in a second. It appears to be the same single threaded performance as the 12900K and about 10 to 15% faster than the 5950X and single threaded. But then on multi-threaded, if we take a look over here, it is closer to 20% faster than the 12900K and the 5950X, which are roughly tied in their multi-threaded scores. A 20% performance bump year on year, or even like eight months on eight months from Intel is actually not too bad. However, consider the fact that 20% isn't as good considering that they are increasing the core count by 50%. However, those eight extra cores will only be E cores and not P cores. So it's not really coming out where it's gonna be all that much better in performance. But again, keep in mind the fact that this test sample was only running at 4.6 gigahertz. Intel's 12900K was running at 5.05 gigahertz. So it's actually really impressive that the 13900K kept up in single threaded performance and that it's beating in multi-threaded performance. And then if they can actually keep the clock speed up like we're expecting them to delivering something like a 12900K or KS experience where we're looking in the 5.1 to 5.2 gigahertz region, you would likely see that it's going to actually compete with the Ryzen 7000 on single core and then probably beat it on multi-core by quite a bit, especially considering it's gonna have 24 cores as opposed to to the 7950X is 16. But it wasn't just the CPU that we saw in this benchmark. Actually, it was the ARC A770 GPU being tested alongside. As you can see right here, a user benchmark gave the 13900K an outstanding score, but the A770 uh, was terrible. Uh, and it's probably because it was one gigabyte. It may have only been integrated graphics as it were, and this is like a misreported GPU right there. So this might not actually be the ARC Alchemist GPU. But this early benchmark gets me excited to hear a little bit more about the 13th gen from Intel. I do expect that the 13th gen versus the Ryzen 7000 series might actually be some of the fiercest CPU competition that we've seen this side of the decade. We could go back and forth in the comments with AMD fanboys being like, Intel's gonna run hot and loud. And then Intel fanboys being like, AMD didn't get any IPC increase on this bad boy. But I, I think the, the constant arguing about it actually proves the point that we're we're actually in a space right now where CPUs are competitive all around. Intel's coming out with their best, AMD's coming out with the best. The people who win are the consumers because hopefully that competition will drive prices down and give more options for you and for me to be able to enjoy more as time goes on. But let me know what you think of the 13900K and its benchmarks down below in the comments. And I'm gonna let you know what I think about Valve delaying the Steam Deck dock. You get no deck dock, okay? My friends, Steam can't bring that out to you because of COVID delays. Here in 2022, COVID closures at their manufacturing facilities are causing some delays. So the the docking station is going to be indefinitely postponed at this point. They have no release date. They've never had a release date, but they're going to continue to work on improving the docked experience for the Steam Deck with all USB-C hubs and external displays. So they're not going to sit on their butts in the meantime, even though this is a hardware thing and the people who would improve the experience are software people. So it, uh, that I would assume those are two different types of engineers and 
socked like teams working on these things. But you know what's not delayed? Crypto stocks. This right here on time, as it always is during hot days. We got Bitcoin up half a percent to be at 3269. Not a whole lot of movement in the crypto market today. Ethereum down ever so slightly to be at 1818, and Dogecoin up ever so slightly to be at 8.2 cents. But the hopes for people who are on iPad are up because it looks like Apple at WWDC is going to be debuting iPad OS 16 with redesigned multitasking interface, according to Bloomberg's report. The next major software update will make it easier to see what apps are open and switch between tasks, said the people who asked not to be identified because the changes aren't yet public. It also will let users resize app windows and offer new ways for users to handle multiple apps at once. This is something that kind of is what Apple's driving towards with the iPad. It's essentially a laptop that's not a laptop. They've been stuffing the M1 chip into their iPad Pros, and I think it was the iPad Air that they stuffed it into most recently. They want to bring laptop hardware into that form factor, but the thing that's been holding the iPad back for so long is that it's a garbage OS as far as like actually being usable as a computer. So them redesigning all this stuff is good. Also being confirmed that there's a WebKit adding infrastructure for this multitasking mode and all that stuff. So we are expecting to see this roll out on June 8th at WWDC. And not only is Apple changing their ways, it looks like Ford is gonna be changing their ways specifically when it comes to their sales of electric vehicles. With things like the F-150 Lightning, their Mo Mustang Mach-E and other ones, they think that they need to switch over to online only sales in order to compete with other electric car manufacturers, saying that they've got to go to non-negotiated prices and they've got to go 100% online. There's no inventory at dealerships, it goes directly to the customer and 100% remote pickup and delivery. Adding that they think that the distribution model that they currently have with dealerships adds about $2,000 in extra costs per car compared to Tesla. And so if they eliminate the dealership, specifically with the EVs, they're gonna be able to make the prices come down and probably be a bit more competitive. However, still having dealerships for all of the ICE vehicles that they currently sell. And Polestar is looking to revamp their EV. The Polestar 2 is having a beast performance edition. The BST edition 270 is gonna be a, a rare release from them that's gonna be limited in quantity. That's gonna have all of these extra extra goodnesses up to 476 horsepower from up from 408 and it'll have lowered ride heights different springs all of that kind of good stuff and then it'll also have a 0 to 62 mile per hour time of 4.4 seconds which this article says compares to the model 3 performance it seems like all of these other things will make it a better like racing car or like actual better feel of a vehicle but as far as 0 to 60 time the model 3 performance is 3.1 seconds and then the long range version is 4.2 so if you get the long Long range version, if you add in something like their acceleration boost for an extra two grand, you're looking at 3.7 seconds. So the Polestar 2, even with those improvements at 4.4 seconds to zero to 100 kilometers, actually isn't competing with the Model 3 performance. And it's not gonna be cheap either. You have to register for it. They're only gonna have 270 samples and it's gonna cost 75,000 and a half dollars. Not a half dollar, but 75 and a half thousand. Was that confusing? Good, because AMD wants to confuse you with their GPUs. Okay, we're getting a new, Smack and brand new GPU from AMD known as the Radeon 6700, to which that might not sound very different to you, but it's lacking the RX for the first time that we've seen on the 6000 series. Sapphire confirming these specifications on the Radeon 6700 GPU. However, it looks like this is actually going to be the 6700M GPU that's currently in laptops, just put in a desktop card for reasons probably to get rid of excess stock maybe potentially sapphire is planning on selling these as mining cards but then the mining market took a heavy hit so it's making it so that they have to transition this into being a gamer card and they're going to begrudgingly selling it to you instead of drop shipping this to mining operations all across the world nothing super special about it but new gpu from amd that's not an rx and new design details coming out about the rtx 4090 igor's lab publishing some details on the PCB that's going to be on this massive behemoth of a card. It looks like the PCB is going to be exactly equivalent to what's on the RTX 3090 Ti. It's going to keep NVLink up here. It's going to have the single 16 pin power connector that's right up here. All of the rest of this stuff looks like it's very similar to what's on the RTX 3090 Ti, but there's also further details that he provided where it looks like the bill of materials release should happen sometime this month. Then there's engineering validation happening soon with the fact that it's going to start mass production 
production in August, which aligns with the time frame that we've seen of the release date of this next RTX 40 series card generation. So it kind of looks like we're moving forward. We're getting a whole lot of good hardware later this year. It, it really does feel like we just got a whole bunch. Intel's 12th gen just came out. It feels like the RTX 30 series just came out and the RX 6000 series, but obviously they've been out for a while now. I'm glad that Intel, AMD, NVIDIA did not like not do anything while there was a supply shortage. Like they actually kept developing these cards and we get them at the normal cadence. I'm excited to see these come out. I'm excited for essentially all of it. Let me know what you're most excited for. RTX 40 series, RX 7000 series, AMD's Ryzen 7000 chips, or the Intel 13th gen. Which of those four are you hyped about the most? want to hear from you down below in the comments and you're not going to hear from me no more until Monday because this week's episode of hot news is done it's finished it's gone goodbye